Welcome to Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. My name is Jack McLean. I am your host. And on this episode, I will be updating you on all things to happen for the upcoming week, as well as update the live episodes that we have on the Prepare Like a Pro live chat show, which we host on our YouTube channel and the upcoming episodes on our podcast. Stay right to the end, as every week we have a power tip where I'll share a performance tip to help your game, both from the developing strength and conditioning coaches as well as developing athletes. This week will be a bit of both. It's on AFL preparation for game day performance. Now that we're coming close to round one in the AFL, that's next week, state leagues the week after, and local leagues um, will either be the week after or the same week as the state league. So we are at that time of year where game day preparation is critical, uh, both from a mental and physical point of view, and finding a routine is no doubt something that athletes are fine-tuning at this stage. So I thought we'd spend some time on some things that we use at Prepare Like a Pro to help our athletes. And for the strength and conditioning coaches listening in, maybe there's some tips and tricks uh, or some refreshers for you to help with your athletes. In terms of the upcoming week, we have Aaron Kellett, the physical performance manager of the men's Australian cricket team, on on our Tuesday episode. He, prior to work for Australia Cricket, uh, Aaron has had a range of high-performance uh, roles, both in sports science and strength and conditioning across a wide variety of elite sports, such as Queensland Academy of Sport, Western Bulldogs, and Tennis Australia. This was a hugely informative interview, sharing his career journey in the field of strength and conditioning, um, but also we spent a fair bit of time on leadership, uh, as Aaron has spent um, a fair chunk of his career over the last decade more particularly in leadership roles uh, in significant uh, environments. So we spent a fair bit of time on what leadership looks like, uh, particularly for a working in a big, big team and um, some tips and tricks that he does around feedback and how to um, grow and learn um, from either your mistakes or from practitioners around you in um, bettering yourself as a leader. This week's Wednesday's Get Better Plan episode will be why strength and conditioning coaches must create their own job keeper. This is something particularly um, relevant to me during the 2020 year uh, and no doubt to a lot of other coaches due to COVID. You may have lost your full-time job or lost a significant um, income stream due to COVID and you had to think quick on your feet and build a more resilient business, whether it be online uh, or going from one-on-one training to group training, whatever it might be. So uh, I share my learnings, uh, mistakes, and also things that worked um, during this time uh, at the Australian Strength and Conditioning Association, and I'm now able to share that on our podcast. So if you're interested in learning tips, tricks around marketing, how to gain leads, uh, how to retain them, of course, with programming and coaching, and as well uh, how to build a um, business that is robust in COVID times or doesn't fully rely on your time but um, can have some passive income as well. And then make sure to tune in on our Wednesday Get Better Plan, which will be uh, dropping this week. Our Friday episode will be with Jared Kay, founder of the Six Principle and Speed Project, how to layer speed development amongst gym and sporting demands for field-based athletes. He was part of our uh, guest panel on the Australian Lead high performance facilities which is a bite-sized interview went for about 10 minutes and jared is hugely passionate about speed development Uh, he had some time over in america where the penny dropped uh, as he mentioned on this is a there's a um, gap in the market in australia for focusing on high speed max velocity efforts and both from a kinematics point of view your technique um, but also uh, having enough space so um, where most of the industry coaches working in the gym don't have adequate space to be able to allow the athletes to get to top speed. Um, so by using the track and, and um, aligning himself with another practitioner who uh, has a specialty in this area, um, they've come together with this speed project, project, which a lot of AFL footballers are using in their off-season. So um, definitely recommend to listening into that episode, which will be released on Friday. And for those that want to listen to the whole um, podcast, you can watch that on our YouTube channel. Just go search Prepare Like a Pro and um, the Australian Lead High Performance Facility. We'll add the link in our show notes so you can click and watch that 
Uh, it's getting a fair bit of traction as it's um, we were lucky enough to host an event and share some of Australia's leading high performance facilities all around the country. I want to have a quick shout out to one of our athletes. Uh, he's an absolute ripper of a kid, Jai Bartiz, for his super effort yesterday. Uh, he knows exactly what I'm talking about, and his father, Michael, um, all of us um, are super proud of you, Jai, for, for what you did. Uh, amazing performance due to the circumstances and what um, challenges life threw at you at that point in time with COVID and then a physical injury and your ability to be resilient and driven to maximize your performance and having such a great day on the field is a testament to you, mate. So um, just want to shout out to yourself. You know exactly what you did and um, yeah, we're super pumped to see what the upcoming season is, is going to uh, hold for you. So shout out to Jai. I don't do that all the time, but for special uh, moments, um, I'll, I'll definitely shout out to our athletes that are do special things. So well done, Jai. Okay, we're going to go over to Instagram now to answer this week's questions. G'day, Instagram world. Jack here for the Prepare Like a Pro Live Chat Sunday show. We're going to dive straight into some questions. Our first one is from Mark Perry. Uh, he's tried a couple of times to jump on the live chat, but keeps getting sidetracked. So he wanted to send through questions around his sore Achilles. So um, excuse me for those in the Instagram world. I'm just going to read off my computer Mark's question around his Achilles. So he wrote, been doing a couple of run sessions uh, since December, all interval work, but a speed session and high volume endurance session. Recently, the old Achilles uh, saw first thing each morning and take a while to warm up for running sessions. I've also started adding in some plyometrics, nothing crazy, but I wanted to make sure I'm not doing any damage before the season. They are fine once they warm up. Yeah, so Achilles injuries, uh, Mark, can be um, something that will have some uh inconsistency in, in what will work for them the key is finding a good um pre-training um, warm-up routine that isn't too um aggressive with force so things things like running jumping and deep plyometrics you want to try and save until the achilles is feeling good so isometrics can be really helpful just simply holding a um, a calf raise for a period of time you can add a bar on your back as well to load it up um, or if you, you're doing it before a run and you do want to just not be in a gym but do it from home, some standing calf raises, you might hold that for 10 seconds, uh, five reps each side just to focus on engaging that calf. Uh, can be an effective way to get some good blow fl blood flow through that area but also engage all the muscles as well as the Achilles. Then doing some low dynamic uh, engagement just to get the uh, ankle going in a dynamic fashion ready for running, so things like pogo jumps, um, straight up and down. Um, we've got the Pogo um, jump series in our YouTube channel. So if you go to our YouTube channel, Prepare Like a Pro, there's a whole heap of Pogo range exercises that you can do. Um, but just getting that dynamic work through the ankle in a low load um, plyometric like a Pogo can be really, really good. Then you might just do some run throughs um, like a, a march, a skip into a, a bound, um, some side shuffling. Um, so some different movement patterns, both in the frontal plane, um, just to get the body warmed up and get the hips and um, your uh, core trunk firing. Um, so we're not focusing all our energy on just the ankle, but also getting your, your arms going, your core firing and your hips uh, is really, really important. And then from there, you might just ease into it. So just do some gentle 80 meter efforts uh, at a feel good pace with a good recovery, like 10, 20 seconds in between. So you might be going every 45 seconds on your 80 meter efforts, just straight line. Um, and that way you're not uh, dealing with fatigue uh, and you're not doing conditioning. You're just warming up um, the Achilles in working on good ryth rhythmic running and, and running efficiency. Um, so focusing on your cadence. So that'd be a little bit more of an extensive warm up, probably to what you have been doing, but at least that gives the Achilles a good chance to, um, warm up like you mentioned it it feels better as it's warm but just early stage um, getting into it it can um, get aggravated so try that it's a little bit more of a longer burn and a slow burn um, you might spend 15 20 minutes doing that protocol um, and uh, but hopefully it allows you to 
um, feel good during your conditioning blocks, like you mentioned, the speed session and the endurance sessions. In terms of your speed session, I imagine that's probably not causing a whole um, lot of issues as Achilles love speed and power and high intensity, um, but volume can flare it up, particularly if, you, if you're not um, moving efficiently or if you're doing high density in your workout, so high work to low rest period. So with your endurance sessions, while you're not symptom-free, um, think try and keep your efforts to shorter distances um, with lots of rest periods throughout. So you're keeping the quality of form. Uh, so you're running really smoothly and you, you're covering the ground um, well. Um, and that can just help mitigate poor movement patterns and therefore hopefully uh, it's generally it's not the loads that might be doing the issue. It might just be the technique itself. So by maintaining good form um, over good distances, uh, hopefully you can still progressively overload um, the area and your conditioning um, while mitigating any flare-ups the next day. So see how that works overall. Longer warm-ups, um, but deliberate warm-ups, not just warming up the Achilles and the calf com ankle complex, but also hips and trunk uh, and working on that running rhythm early in your warm-up. And then from there, just do a um, set of 10 80s going every 45 seconds, so you're getting good rest. Um, and that can be like a good screen on how hard you can push that day. If you're feeling good, that might be a day to up your volume or stick to the plan. If you're not feeling good during those 80s, and that might be to back off um, the plan to, to listen to your body and accommodate, um, might be sore from the previous session or the gym session that you did. And then from there, you, you carry on with your plan. So great question, Mark. Hopefully uh, my advice helps. Ultimately, the best thing you can do is work closely with a physiotherapist um, especially particularly someone who's worked with footballers and athletes so they can uh, uh, give you a helping hand and give you that support, of course. Um, but if you have any more questions, feel free to send through. Next question is from our LinkedIn page. It is Charlie. Oh, he's just written Charlie. So he's written, what is the best warm-up you can do for uh, football on game day well largely that will be dependent on your team um, and individuals won't have a large say to do with it however in the warm-ups i've run there's always individual prep time um, so we allow athletes to have flexibility through their warm-up to add in some boxing um, or some extra activation work uh, or just to chill um, so there will be individual prep time no doubt in your warm-up routine charlie but in terms of a team warm-up um, maybe you're a strength and conditioning coach and, you, and you're running your first warm-up on game day. That's where we want to have a low-level physical prep, athletic prep type warm-up, and that might be 30 minutes before the game. So that's some ground-based mobility drills, some low-level run-throughs and uh, running drills, both lateral movement and, and front, front movement, backwards pedals as well. Um, some low-level plyometrics like the pogos I mentioned earlier or some and level bounding. Um, and then from there, you could get into like some tackle work just to get the intensity up a little bit. So some um, pumbling tackle prep for the shoulders and you might do some low-level tackle drills in threes. Then the coach may speak to the athletes. Um, you get your mouth guards in, have your toilet break, get your jumpers on, and then that's a five to five or so minutes for athletes to have their own mental physical prep and that's a really important time where you might in, add in a boxing session for those that want to get uh, extra arousal level before a game or for some they just want to chill out and, and uh, focus on their on their preparation from a mental point of view and they just chill so five minutes of your own time and then that's when we go into the field after that and that's where it's very much football focused so um, doing some accelerations and some agility work from a physical point of view and then going in and getting the footies out, kicking in threes, um, doing some uh, lane work, making sure we've got plenty of footy in the hand um, so you're getting your, your touch. Then you're going into your lines, so breaking up into forwards, backs and mids. And, and then from there, um, typically they would go into a tackle grid or some form of combative work uh, at high intensity. So we're getting used to being hit um, and, and also getting that uh, intensity up so the mental and physically you're prepared for competition. And then you might just do a couple of run-throughs building up to 80 90% of uh, max speed and then you're ready to go. So not a lot of work. Uh, typically it's about 15 minutes before a game 
um, and it starts slow and then builds up to full noise but by the time it's game time uh, so you're both mentally and physically prepared but also there's some individual um, time there for athletes to adjust as they need which is really really important great question Charlie hopefully that answer uh, helped and like Mark if you have any more questions or queries to follow up make sure to send them through that's it for this week's questions if you have any questions or queries, make sure to send them through to us either via email at jackpreparelikeapro.com or you can send us an audio message by going to our podcast page where we've linked in SpeakPipe, which is just a platform where you can send in an audio message and you will make an appearance on our podcast and I'll answer your question that way. And then, of course, tune in live 6 p.m. Sunday. Um, we host a live uh, update show with a Q&A embedded in it. Okay, in terms of the uh, free trial that we released um, during the week, that goes for 14 days. Some of you have been asking how to get access to it. It's very simple. You just head to our website, preparelikeapro.com, and then you'll see there's a on our pages, there's one that's called free program. Click that, enter in your email, and you'll be emailed the activation link for Team Builder. Um, and it's always good to start on a Monday. So if you're listening to this, in the podcast world, and it's a Monday, join up today to start the 14-day free trial. That also includes a presentation that I host every Sunday at 5 o'clock for our Academy members. You get access to that, so you get two of those um, where there's a um, coaching session at the end of it, a bit of a consultation individual to your game, and I'll present on a topic before that on speed development, power training, mobility, whatever it might be relevant to football that week. So if you're interested in that, remember to head to our website. We'll add the link in our show notes. And um, just lastly with this one, PT21, thank you so much for your review. PT wrote, this podcast is absolutely awesome and a great way for me to listen to different concepts involving the ever-growing field of elite sports and sports performance. It provides a great insight into the great minds of those within the industry and their views and experiences of being a part of it. Always a great part of my day listening to it. Thanks, Pete. Really appreciate the review. Uh, not only does it uh, warm our hearts here at Prepare Like a Pro by, get, by um, being, being able to see that this is helping you with your journey in your football, um, but also it allows us to reach more people. So if you've been listening to the podcast and you're liking what we're doing, um, please give us a review either on iTunes or on Google, or you can also rate us now on Spotify. As I mentioned, this week's power tip, it will be on weekly preparation um, and that really does start from when your game finishes. That's when we want to get into that recovery mode. So um, it's the day where you're going to be most aroused from, um, and you're going to want to try and relax the nervous system as much as we can. So by getting into an ice bath, that can be an effective method. Method by getting a, a flush massage, so not deep tissue, but just uh, an easy flush, uh, foam rolling, static stretching, kicking the legs up along the wall and sitting down. Uh, doing some mindfulness, anything that you can do to try and relax the mind, going into a pool to do some walkthroughs, um, gentle mobility work. All these things are designed around slowing down and slowing down our nervous system, um, which ultimately is going to influence how well we sleep at night that night. And that's where we get our um, bang for buck in terms of recovery. So that's really, really critical. And that's how we want to start our preparation for the next game is by recovering really well from the game that's just occurred. From there, you want to check, choose a method that you know works for you and practice matches for those that have them this week uh, are a great opportunity to try some different methods. So you might have done ice baths before, but you've never done hot, cold. So going contrast methods before we go three minutes in the ice bath and three minutes sauna or three minutes spa and vice versa. Obviously, make sure you haven't got any corkies, otherwise you can cause some extra bleed or muscle strains because you can cause actually bleeding with the heat. Um, but if you're healthy and you've just finished the game, uh, contrast bathing can be a really good way to get that relaxation effect. Um, and not only that, take into account the game that you played. So did you play a crash and bash, lots of contact and the body swollen and bruised, therefore ice would be really, really effective? Or did you play a high intensity, it was a beautiful weather, and you played an outside game where you did lots of high-speed running sprint distance, therefore you might want to flush the legs and massage and spinning the legs over for a walk or pool or bike uh, might be a really good way just to help promote blood flow and help the muscles recover. 
So think of the game that you played and that will, should influence the recovery method that you use. Then from there, we want to start preparing for the next game. So from a long-term athlete development point of view, make sure you're getting your upper body strength work in early in the week. Uh, we also want to lift heavy uh, early in the week with your squat um, movement. Uh, so your bilateral, whether you're doing a trap bar squat or a, or a box squat or whatever it might be, whatever your max lift is that you did over preseason, that's when we want to lift heavy in the week. And then as the week progresses, we want to, from a physical point of view, we want to increase the speed that we move. So you move slow and heavy early in the week from a strength point of view, and then we move fast in our speed work. So you might do some strides if you need to, or you just train with high intensity on the on your main session of the week for the back end of the week, so on the Thursday. Um, in terms of preparation for the week ahead, work back from the game. So are you playing on a Friday, are you playing on a Saturday, are you playing on a Sunday? And that should influence what you do the day before. So you should have your ritual routine that you do that you know works well for you from a mental, physical point of view. Some of it might be a primer session, so explosive movements in the gym. Some of it might be a yoga session. Some of it might be a swim. Some of it might be nothing at all. Uh, some might be a light, a long distance jog. Um, whatever it is, what's going to work well for you is the right thing to do. So sticking to that and a routine that you know works for your game. Then, in terms of your sleep routine, rather than going thirty minutes earlier, which most people do. It's the time where you're going to be most anxious and you're going to be um, more likely to, if you try and go 30 minutes earlier to sleep, you're going to be looking straight at the ceiling. So I would advise if your routine time to go to sleep is 10 p.m., try going to sleep not at 9.30 but 10.30. So then you fall asleep within the first five minutes, which takes the mental side out of it and you're going to get a nice long rested sleep. Uh, So that's hot tip there in terms of recovery. Then you wake up with plenty of energy, feeling fresh going into the game. In terms of your nutrition, work back from the game time. So if you're playing at two o'clock, we don't want to try and you don't want to be going into that with a full stomach, like a a full belly, which is going to not feel great. So you want to go in not fasted either. So work back from the two p.m. Your main meal might be around twelve o'clock, and then you might have your breakfast around nine. So you're getting a good cup uh, meal with your carbohydrates, vegetables, protein, and some fats two meals before that game day, and then you might have a little bit of a snack uh, and some gels, uh, so easily digestible um, fuel um, before the game, like 30 minutes during the warm-up and staying well hydrated throughout the game day. So you're not overdoing it. So uh, there's only so much the stomach can handle uh, in a given time period. So you're not overdoing it, but you're eating um, food that you're familiar with and drinks that you're familiar with. So there's no surprises for the digestive system and you, you've got plenty of energy to burn. And then, of course, in terms of your nutrition, making sure that you're well hydrated throughout the game as best you can. Uh, naturally, you're going to be sweating more than you can intake. Um, like I mentioned, the stomach can only handle too so much. And our recent interview with Dale Griffiths um, was a great discussion on this on our YouTube channel around making how important sodium plays and knowing your, the sodium concentration in your sweat and your sweat rate would influence how much supplementation you would take with with sodium and how much water you should be drinking at half time, quarter time, and throughout the game to limit the effects, the fatiguing effects of dehydration. So I recommend listening to that one. Um, but we don't want to just be thinking about hydration. You also want to be getting in your glucose. So that's where the gels come in play because they're easily digestible and they're dense. You don't need to have a lot of them to get um, adequate glucose from them. Hopefully this power tip helps all the footballers out there um, with your preparation. Uh, like I mentioned, it's a great time to start polishing it up your routine. So maybe your sleep's down pat and you've got a good spot with that. Maybe your primer sessions are down pat, so your physical weekly routine is down pat, but it's your nutrition that you need to fine tune. Um, so work with a sports dietitian, seek one out that has worked in, with footballers and spend some energy on that because you're going to get re- good return on investment. So work on an area that you feel that you know to your gut um, needs a little bit of work and now's the time to do it. So then come round one, you've got your routine down pat with all the big rocks your sleep your recovery your preparation and your nutrition thanks guys i'll see you on the next episode